All right, guys, who wants to see big fights? Earlier, we announced that the UFC had came to a deal with Disney, ABC, ESPN conglomerate uh, for 15 shows next year exclusively on ESPN. It's a multi-year deal, so we don't know how many shows are going to be in the rest of the years. But this is a huge promotional tool for the UFC. I think it's going to be a much better deal for them than Fox was. But what about GSP versus Nate Diaz? Who's seen this coming? Um, if we thought GSP was fighting a Diaz brother, um, I probably would have assumed it was the rematch with Nick. Uh, they've been looking for an opponent for Nick. He says he's ready to fight. His suspension just ended with USADA. Uh, now, of course, Nate hasn't been in the cage in around a year and a half. Uh, George has been struggling, too. He had the diverticulitis he suffered through um, after Michael Bisping. But, of course, GSP, one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of the UFC, uh, records for most takedowns in the UFC. Um, Nate's going to have that you know, that verbal assault, that verbal warfare with GSP. But, you know, George went through that with his brother. Uh, so he's been there. He's not going to be intimidated by Nate. Um, the most important factor in this entire thing, though, and the most surprising thing to me was that Dana said this would be at 155. Um, that makes it a much more competitive match for me, at least, but you can look at GSP here at 170. I mean, he's huge. He's huge at 170. How in the world does he make 155? I don't know if he's lost a lot of weight from diverticulitis. Um, I hope he's not weak. But they're looking at this in August for UFC 227. Um, this is Dana's exact words. We are working right now to put together a George St. Pierre versus Nate Diaz fight. Uh, it is true they would fight at 155 pounds. So, crazy. Um, GSP versus Diaz would serve as the co-main event to the Bantamweight title fight between TJ Dillashaw and Corey Gambrand. What a freaking card. Uh, then White went on to say that in a perfect card, in a perfect world, what he wants uh, is also on that exact same card. The Luke Rockhold versus Alexander Gustafson fight. That fight should be absolutely incredible. And I think Luke Rockhold, I think it's good that he's moving up to 205. I, I think that's an incredible decision. I think that's an incredible fight. Then a middleweight scrap for the fourth fight. Uh, he said he would want to do Derek Brunson versus Antonio Carlos Jr. Uh, so that's Nate Diaz versus GSP. T.J. Dillashaw versus Corey Gambrand, Lou Crockhold versus Alexander Gustafson, and Derek Brunson versus Antonio Carlos Jr., all on UFC 227. That's what they're trying to put together. Uh, talk about spoil this fans. What an incredible card that would be. Uh, of course, the UFC just signed a multi-year contract. I talked about it earlier with Disney and ESPN. Um, at least 15 fights will be on ESPN next year exclusively. Um, they said also on-demand content, so live and on-demand content. Uh, so we may be able to see these guys' old fights coming up to this, even if you don't have Fight Pass. Lines up perfectly with ESPN's standalone business that they just started, uh, $4.99. For their streaming and now it's going to include all this ufc what a huge deal for both companies um, i think it's very smart for the ufc i think it might even be smarter for espn after just launching that new digital streaming and it really gives people another reason uh, to take this now nate's nate is hard to finish i don't know if i see either one of these guys finishing each other um He's very, very hard to finish. And if he's going to finish George, you would think it would have to be by submission. George has been submitted in the past, but he's only been submitted once. That was a very long time ago uh, in the first fight with Matt Hughes. Then he came back to beat Matt Hughes twice. 
George St. Pierre's actually only lost once since then. He lost his title once to George St. or uh, George Matt Sarah, excuse me. Um, a lot of people said that was a fluke. Matt Sarah landed you know, a knockout punch. George St. Pierre came back and dominated him. Um, Nate Diaz, of course, has incredible wrestling skills, uh, incredible wrestling takedown, incredible jiu-jitsu. Uh, so did his brother. But that's 25 minutes that an older George St. Pierre with ring rust would have to go through um, and not be submitted. Is all it takes is one time. One time for Nate to, you know, light GSP up. Uh, you know, and one of those great triangle chokes or an arm bar uh, reminiscent of what Matt Hughes did to George St. Pierre before. Now, Nate would have to come in a huge underdog in this, I would think. The big surprise in this whole thing was is that Nate and George St. Pierre would be fighting at 155. Uh, Dana White confirmed this. He said this fight would definitely be at 155. So I think that makes this fight much, much more competitive. Um, at 170, it would be very, very hard for Nate to compete with the power of George St. Pierre. But I'm wondering how George is going to make 170. Uh, he just fought at 185. He looked absolutely humongous versus Michael Bisbing. Um, a lot of people didn't realize he looked huge in his last fight against Johnny Hendricks at 170. Of course, he fought his whole career at 170. Uh, look at how skinny Nate Diaz is. And the guy doesn't even eat me. No, I'm not going to make fun of him. I love Nate Diaz. But um, George is just so much bigger. I mean, he's he's a true welterweight. And this is what I was talking about against Johnny Hendricks. Look at this. He's 170 pounds. This guy is a monster. Imagine him going to take Nate Diaz down. He's going to really have to work with some incredible wrestlers. Um I know he's been working with Gilbert Melendez a lot. There's been talks that he would bring in Ben Askren to train with him. That would be the smartest thing. That's what I would do if, if I was Nate Diaz. And you know they're throwing a ton of money at these guys for this fight. A ton of money. That's why I think this fight definitely happens. And Dana basically said it's going to happen. So he's got to be pretty confident. So I don't know what he offered these guys, but obviously it's in the multi, multi millions of dollars. Nate said he wasn't going to come back until he got paid the big bucks. George St. Pierre always gets paid the big bucks. I mean, he's, you know, he's the star. He's he's the absolute uh, freaking star of the UFC for a very, very long time. Uh, he's got that big draw over in Canada. Uh, really the UFC's only draw in Canada now that Rory McDonald is out of the UFC for whatever you know for whatever reason they let him escape uh, I don't think that was real smart but you know anyways that's neither here nor there um, this fight is gonna do gangbuster numbers I almost think that this fight is going to do some con like Conor McGregor numbers. And I think the UFC wanted to put together a big fight uh, to say, you know what, we don't need Conor McGregor in there to make a lot of money and put together big fights. Um, we, have, we have stars that can do it. Um, they have Brock Lesnar. They have GSP as he comes back. The Diaz brothers are both mega stars. These guys are absolutely mega stars. GSP is the easiest one to compare with McGregor because he's got a country behind him. Um, I would think that they would try to put this in Canada. That's what I would try to do. But you also do it in California. The Diaz brothers have so many fans. Uh, wherever this is at, obviously it's going to sell out. So I guess that part of it doesn't matter a whole lot. It's going to be the pay-per-view revenue. And I think the pay-per-view is going to be off the charts. They announced it way in advance, obviously. We got UFC 224 coming up. And Dana just announced what he wants the top four fights for UFC 227 to be. So I believe also what this tells us is that he's saying pretty much 100%. This is going to be the blockbuster fight of the summer. 
it's not going to be Conor McGregor. We're cutting you out. No matter what happens, you're not going to have the blockbuster fight of the summer. I mean, Conor McGregor could go to jail. We don't even know if he's going to be allowed back in the country. Most likely he will because he's got freaking money. And we know money talks, and he makes the UFC a lot of money. But I would love to see these guys make a lot of money. George St. Pierre's made a lot of money over his career. Um, Nate Diaz basically made a lot of money for the one fight, you know, um, against Conor McGregor. The Diaz brothers are a bigger draw, I think, than the UFC realizes. Maybe they're finally starting to realize. You go into these forums, and there are so many Diaz fans, and these guys haven't fought. You know, Nate hasn't fought in almost two years. Nick's got to be going on three. Uh, 2015, I believe, against Anderson Silva. July 2015, something like that. So almost three years since Nick's been in there, and people are chomping at the bit. They can't wait to see him fight. They can't wait to see Nate fight. These guys are mega stars. Uh, of course, everybody and their mother is going to want to see George St. Pierre fight. Uh, they're going wondering how he's going to look at 155 pounds. I mean, how much did that diverticulitis take away from him that he could come in at 155 pounds? Well, I said he looked so big against Michael Bisping. I mean, he looked like Super Saiyan George St. Pierre. I mean, it it was ridiculous. I don't know what his walk around weight is. I mean, this would be in August, so it's May now, so he's got three months basically to cut down to 155. That's a whole different looking body type at 155 pounds than 185 pounds. That's 30 pounds of fight weight. 30 pounds of fight weight. That's that's so huge. It's in three months. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. Um, now, what does that do to his reflexes? You got to think about all of the things that factor into this. Uh, you look into boxing and you look at Roy Jones Jr., what he did. He dominated 175. He went up to heavyweight, beat John Ruiz for the heavyweight championship. And I would compare that to this. He only weighed in, I believe, 195 pounds. He might have barely break 200, broke 200, um, Roy Jones did, when he went in and fought at heavyweight. So he put on about 25 pounds of muscle. Now, GSP is going to be losing about 30 pounds, and it's got to pretty much be all muscle. There's not much fat on him. So I'm not sure where he's going to find 30 pounds. Um, you better be, you know, better be hiring Mike Dolce. Uh, you better be doing everything you can, but the fat's just not there. So the fact that it's 155 pounds uh, just blows my mind. Um, would I pay to see the fight? I'd pay the 100 bucks if it's one of those super fight things. Those four fights on one card, and I hope they don't make it that, but if they charge the $100 like they did for the, the McGregor Mayweather and for the Pacquiao Mayweather, I'd drop my $100 on it. A absolutely. I mean, there's only really about two or three pay-per-views per year that, you know, have that mega star, uh, that mega fight. And this is definitely a mega fight. It's not for any championships, and I don't believe it has to be. Um, obviously, it could be, you know, George St. Pierre could have kept his championship at 185. Nate Diaz never make 185, but... George St. Pierre said he was almost retired, pretty much. How much money did they have to throw at him to bring him back in so quickly? And so much over the radar. I would imagine these negotiations would have been done pretty quickly to keep them from getting out. Um, so much news has been getting out. A lot of people have been saying that Ariel Hawani pushes a lot of news out there that he's not supposed to. He's got an inside source in the USC. This is the first I heard of this today. And this was, you know, it was a few hours old when I seen it. Not even an hour old, I think. I actually knew about this when I did the ESPN Disney deal video earlier today. But 
I wanted to sit down at the computer so I could do this properly. Um, crazy fight, guys. Crazy fight. Um, I would have to say GSP is the winner. He's the favorite. Uh, she is me. My heart of hearts says Nate, Nate Diaz can beat him because I'm a huge Nate Diaz fan. I'm a huge Diaz brother fan. I'm also a huge GSP fan. Uh, don't get me wrong on that. But GSP has to be a huge favorite just because of his record of the most takedowns. Uh, the, I believe he's got the most strikes landed. If he doesn't, it's very close. But Nate Diaz is also on that list. I know Nate and Nick are up towards the top of that list. So you're not going to see a boring battle in this, I don't believe. Unless GSP can take Nate down and neutralize him, then you're still going to see Nate on his back working that active submission game, uh, working that rubber guard. Now, here's something I will say. Nate's been rowing with Eddie Bravo and some of these guys that are very, very top level. And jiu-jitsu has taken a huge leap in the last couple years. You have a lot of guys using that rubber guard uh, to pull off the submissions that they weren't pulling off just two, three years ago. Uh, it's an evolution of the game, absolutely. You're starting to see much more leg bars, um, any more ankle picks, things like that. So, I mean, if I was Nate coming in this, I would be training with somebody like Eddie Bravo for my jiu-jitsu, and I would be training with Ben Askren definitely for my takedown defense. Um, I actually think Ben Askren is a better wrestler than GSP, and that's saying a lot. I think Ben Askren is the best wrestler in MMA, period. Best pure wrestler. Does that mean he beats GSP in a fight? Probably not. GSP's a much better striker. Um, I'd still like to see the fight. But this is the fight that we're going to see right now. I want to know what you guys think about this. And we're going to talk about this later tonight. We're going to have a 7 o'clock show. Uh, just because so much going on with the ESPN uh, deal. With this being announced. Uh, so many things. I decided I want to have a 7 p.m stream tonight and talk to you guys about that. I also want to talk about possibly changing the time on the MMA Live at 5 so everybody has a chance to get home from work and do what they need to do before we start that stream. So, guys, think about that. Um, think about if you think that's a good idea or not. Um, and then let me know. Uh, put your comments down below. I'm really curious what everybody thinks. Who do you think wins this fight? Is this is this a huge fight? Um, what do you think about Luke Rockhold versus Alexander Gustafson? Obviously, Corey Gambrandt versus TJ Dillashaw. Already a mega fight that was on there. Um, huge card. Huge, huge card. And Dana actually got this out on the UFC Unfiltered podcast. I think he wanted to get it out there before it was leaked. I think that's why he got it out there so far ahead. We haven't even had UFC 224. That's this Saturday. And he's already putting together 227. Uh, that tells you how many much he's worried about things getting leaked out there uh, right now. Ariel Hawani. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think. Like I said, I will see you guys at 7 uh, o'clock tonight. As always, I love you, and I respect you, and I'll see your fine asses later.